All right, guys, so in this lesson, we're going to be making some icons. So to start out, we're going to make a little heart icons. And I think it's important to mention that there are a lot of icons over here included in the software in terms of assets. Uh, a lot of your iOS icons are going to be here. So if we look, we've got iPhone X tabs. This is all provided because a lot of work like that is going to be used for, you know, Instagram, things that go on a phone. So a lot of this will help out with some of that. But in terms of making our own icons, they're actually pretty easy to do in a lot of cases. So we're gonna start off by making a heart icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a stroke of nothing on this and I'm gonna fill it with something along the lines of this color. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go a little dark right there. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna hold shift on the circle tool. We'll pull this out. And you know what, I'll make this a little bigger just so we can see it. There's no point in not. So we'll just make this huge. Next, we can go over here to our tools and we can find the heart creator. And we can pull out a heart. By default, it's gonna be kind of a wide heart. I'm gonna make this a little bit more right about there. And I'm gonna grab this and we'll turn this in some, probably about this size is what I'm thinking. And we gotta make sure this is centered up. So right there looks to be centered. We'll fill this with a white, or you could go slightly under white, something like right there. I think I'm gonna extend it just a little bit this way. That looks pretty good. And we'll do that. Now, obviously this is kind of done. You could use this, but I like to add a little shadow on these. And the way I generally do that is to grab the rectangle tool and we'll just draw out some random rectangle. It doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna put a fill on this and we're gonna put a gradient, but we're gonna put one side being pretty much transparent. So on this side, we're gonna put it at right at zero. And then on this side, we're gonna put kind of a darker color, still kind of transparent though. So we'll go about midway and we will change the opacity to pretty low. So probably in the 45 range. So now we've got a little bit of our shadow and we can adjust this later, but I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the size. We'll turn it some. And we'll do this, extend it down to here. And we'll increase it up to here. And now if we pull this behind our heart, we're gonna see that we have a little bit of a shadow coming off this. Now, obviously this isn't the greatest shadow in the world. And I think it's because we should go a little darker on this side. In fact, maybe all the way dark. Yeah, I think that looks better. Lastly, I think we need to go over here and we will change the opacity up some and we'll change the color pretty much completely dark. Now we'll change the opacity down to zero. So there isn't much of a color effect all the way on this side, but it will change some of our midpoint areas. But now if you look, we have a little bit of an issue with the corners. So what I like to do here is usually zoom in quite a bit and we will go ahead and convert this to curves, grab our node tool, and we can just add a node right here, pull this out to there, pull this up to here, and same thing on this side. You can add a node about where it's going to turn and where we want it to be. And we can pull this one in. And that looks to be pretty good right there. Last order of business is to go ahead and pull this underneath here so that it's going to stop right there and create pretty much a clipping mask. And there is your heart logo. I think that turned out pretty well. We could actually turn the fill on this side down some, maybe go with a opacity of 35%. That might make it look a little better. And I mean, you can play around with this however much you want, but I think that looks pretty good. And you can take this even farther. So let's do say, let's go ahead and pull this outside of here and we'll redo this. We'll change the color to say a gray, something maybe about there. And then we'll go ahead and delete our heart and we'll grab our gear tool. So let's say we wanted to make a gear logo. It's actually called the cog tool, but I, I would personally call it a gear. And we can go ahead and fill this with something pretty dark, not incredibly dark though, something around there looks pretty good. Go ahead and move it, center it up. I want to reduce the size just a little bit, center it up there. And now we're going to want to go ahead and adjust our curves yet again here. So we kind of have to decide where we want it. We're going to want it somewhere in the middle right here. So what we're probably going to want to do is leave it right about there and we'll grab our node tool. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this up here. And we want to straighten this one out to right about there. 
and we want to straighten this one out. And we'll go ahead and pull this node all the way up to this next part. And as you can see, that looks pretty decent. You could obviously spend more time on it like normal. And one thing I might would do is actually take this and go ahead and add a node here and pull this up under there so that the center is still the same color as the outside over here. And then if we go ahead and pull this under the ellipse, it'll give us that clipping mass so it doesn't overflow like we just had. And boom, you've got yourself a cog or gear logo. Lastly, and this is going to be one of the more advanced ones, but we're going to make a pencil tool logo. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and delete this eclipse here. We'll keep our original eclipse, but this time I'm going to make it probably a yellow or so somewhere right in there. And this is going to take a little bit more work. So we're going to go ahead and grab this tool and we'll make it white. And we will draw part of our body out and then we will duplicate this. And we will duplicate this one more time. Make sure they're pretty much equal. So if we look at the distance between these two, it's going to tell us that right there is 20. We want the difference on this side to be 20 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of snapping on the top. We'll zoom in and we want this difference to be right at 20. So I'm actually going to enable snapping yet again. So I'm going to go down here to the transform and I'm going to change this to 50. Two, one. And that should be good right there. That If I did the math right, that should be an exact of 20 in between each one. Now we can grab all of these together, put them up here, rotate them, hold shift, rotate, do that. Now we've got a little bit of this going on, but now we need the end of the pencil. So this is kind of our handle. And for the end of the pencil, we need a triangle. So we'll go ahead and grab our triangle tool. And I'll just draw out a random triangle, grab our move tool, and we will turn this around while holding shift. Hopefully that should be right at perfect. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on this. And what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and turn all of this back. That way we have horizontal as our viewpoint so I'm gonna turn all this back like so and now we can see just how perfect or imperfect this is so if I go ahead and turn this up here see that snaps right there make sure this is snapped on there and I think what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and increase or decrease the distance between these to about 10 so that's 10 on that side and 10 on that side and we want the distance here to be 10 as well, ideally. That's pretty close. Close enough for uh, horseshoes and whatever the other term is. I guess it's horseshoes and grenades. Close enough for horseshoes and grenades. So now we got a little bit of a pencil, but we got to make our lead. So we're going to do something that we just learned. We're going to duplicate this yet again. Turn down the size a ton. Something probably about there. Decrease it even more. Right there looks pretty good. And what we'll do is select both of these and then we will click subtract. And that's going to pull out that from there. And as we can see, this is looking pretty good. So this is our lead at the bottom and this is the rest of our pencil body. Now we're going to go ahead and grab all of this. We will hold shift and turn it roughly to probably right there. And then we will extend the size. We zoom out. That's our pencil logo, but now we need our drop shadow that we had previously. So we're going to grab all of this yet again. I'm going to move it a little bit more center, right about there. Now I'm going to grab the rectangle tool yet again. I'm just going to draw a random rectangle. We will change the fill to a gradient and we'll put black on this side, transparent on this side. Put this to zero, change the color up some just so we have a little bit more of that going on there. And now let's go over here and we'll change our transparency down to say 35 or so. Might be good. Let's do 30. And if we grab our move tool, hold shift, and let's take a look. So I think what we want to do is put it all the way up here. 
So I'm going to disable snapping and zoom in on these edges. That looks good right there. We could probably zoom in a little bit more and get it perfect if we want to spend more time on it. That looks good right there. That's perfect. And let's zoom out on this side. And we will go over here. And we're going to go ahead and extend this all the way over here. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and grab our node tool, convert to curves. And what we want to do is ideally get this all the way included. So we'll throw this all the way up as high as we can. And then we will turn this node down to about there. And let's zoom up here some more. Make sure this is pretty much perfect. So we're going to want this to be right about there. Maybe a little bit lower. This is the one spot that you kind of have to worry about and put a lot of detail into just because it does end up making an effect difference. So that looks pretty good. Close enough. You're not going to be able to notice it when you're looking really, really far away if it's not exactly perfect. And now all we have to do is go ahead and move this up under here so we a so that we create a clipping mask on this right there and that is our pencil logo so i will say i do notice what i just said we probably wouldn't notice i do notice it a little bit right in here so we're going to go ahead and change this around just a little bit and we'll grab this curve i'm going to zoom in quite a bit right there and right here and I'm going to zoom in some more hopefully that we can get this right about perfect but still off some that looks to be about as close as we're going to be able to get this one and we'll zoom in up here. Make sure this is perfect right in there. Yep, so we do need to do a little bit of work here. Make sure it's perfect. I did say this one was going to be a little bit more complex. I think that might be about as good as we're going to get it. I'm going to move the node a little closer. Hopefully we can get it a little slightly bit better. Right there. Ah, it's still not. Still isn't it. I think that looks pretty good. About as good as we're going to be able to get it here. Especially with a time constraint. And lastly, one more thing. We need to check all the way down here in this corner. We kind of need this to be exact on this corner as well. So... I'm going to enable snapping for this one. It might work out well for us. Yes, sir. Right there. Perfect. Now, if we zoom out, we have ourselves a pencil logo. So I hope you guys did get some value out of this lesson. Just showing you guys how you can make some basic looking logos, add some uh, backdrops to them, make them look a little nicer. Obviously, this could be a little better. In fact, I think if we just cut the opacity down just a little bit, maybe to 50% total on the whole layer, it's going to look better. Yeah, I think that looks better. Honestly, we could probably do 30% on the whole thing and it would probably still look better. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So that's how you guys can make some basic logos. So with that being said, I hope you guys did get some value from this video. If you guys want access to the full course, the link in the description is going to be available for the first 100 people to get it at a discounted price of $7.99. And with all that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video.